right. Happy Monday, listeners. Um, I am so excited about this podcast because I have a long list of listener questions that you guys have requested. So we're going to do a little girl talk episode and joining me is a special guest that I'm so excited about. You may have heard her on her own podcast, House Guest. She's a Texas girly. She's so fun, so cute. And she's joining me to talk all the things. So welcome to the podcast, Kenzie Elizabeth. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Wait, I have to ask, is your last name Elizabeth? Like that's the most elegant name. No, my last name is Piper. <laughs> okay. It's always, I like, yeah, everyone thinks it is Elizabeth though, but it is Piper. Well, on, that also is a really good name though. I, I feel like that's, it's giving like British royalty a little bit. Like oh, thank Kenzie you. Elizabeth Piper. Okay, great name. Um, anyways, I digress. Let's chat about just like things. Um, on this podcast, it's off the rails. So I ask everyone, I should have given you a little bit of warning on this one, but um, what's the most off the rails thing that you've done lately or that like you've witnessed or like that has happened to you? Does anything come to mind? Okay, um, this isn't even like that crazy of a thing because like this has been the least off the rails year of my life that like as far as like me doing crazy <laughs> things. But I've been like stalking everyone on Instagram today because I flew in, I got in from Elliot at like two in the morning basically. My And I, someone stole my suitcase. So I'm like <gasps> currently stalking all of these random girls named Jackie on Instagram to see if they're in Dallas, to see if they have my suitcase because we both have base luggage. And because of the same suitcase, I just feel like we were like a kindred spirit and it's going to come back to me. But I've spent like half of my day stalking these random strangers. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. This is one my literal worst nightmare mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. Um, How do you know her name? Like, uh, can you walk me through this? Oh my God, I'm literally... I'm dying for you. So I flew back home from LA because I have an event that I have to be at tonight that I'm hosting. Okay. With the things that I need in the suitcase, right? It was a carry-on, might I add, all right? Classic me to just book everything hour to hour to hour. I get to the gate. They make me check in. I'm like, okay, whatever. Check the bag. We land at like 1230. I'm waiting for a full hour at baggage claim. Bags finally come out. My bag's nowhere to be found. But there was another brown base bag that I grabbed at first. And then I realized it wasn't mine. I put it back on like immediately. And I had this thought of like, I hope these people aren't tired and take my bag on accident. So then my bag's tracking to DFW, like on their tracker. I don't have an air tag in this one because it's a carry on. Um, Yeah. So then I just took a photo of their bag and their information just in case like I could find them somehow. I'm just hoping to god that she's like oh wait i need my bag back and goes back but like i have great stuff in that bag so i'm like please Mm -hmm. i was gonna ask like what i mean maybe it's like she's like i could get my bag back or i could keep this fabulous stuff but like honestly karma karma will come and get her for that so let's hope she's just like a nice kind caring person but also she has to know you have her information like she has to know she took your bag then you saw her bag and you know what do you have a last name we just have a first name no, I have it. It's like I have first and last name, but I'm not okay. finding her. We're not a hundred. Okay. I thought I found okay. her and it's not her. So now I'm just like, oh my God, this is just such a mess. So anyway, it's uh, not to bring up well. drama, like everyone's least favorite topic, but it also has been one of my fears, like knock on wood. And it seems as though it's happened to me. Oh, no, 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 no. Like this actually should be brought up because the amount of times I my I also have base luggage too, which every basic girl in America does have that like the amount of times I've accidentally grabbed someone else's and just not really even thought twice about it that that could happen to me oh yeah nothing is safe when you think about it nothing is safe nothing is safe and my carry-on is so packed because I did a lot of shopping this weekend so it's like expanded as much as possible so I realized very quickly her bag wasn't my bag because it's not expanded it was way lighter that bag was very heavy you would think they would have realized it like immediately I keep like checking my phone thinking like some random like person's gonna reach out from how <laughs> I don't know but hopefully I get it back like I really need that stuff so we'll see. yeah yeah okay I'm sending you all the lucky girl vibes all the things yeah. but also if I was you I would be I have no shame in my dm game i would be sending a dm to every literal jackie in like the greater dallas area um so maybe like you're gonna get it back you're gonna get it back i thought about putting her name on my instagram story because i have so many people in dallas so i was like i wonder but i'm like is that like crazy invasion of privacy you know so i just like have it (sighs) yeah i I would give it like 24 hours i would give it 24 hours before we go like full crazy um and then after that if you don't have your stuff like Yes. I don't 
actually think she's gonna steal my stuff. I do, because we have the same exact luggage, I do feel as though we're kindred spirits. I do think she's gonna give it back. I'm not like posting her name. Yeah. To, like, like, <laughs> like she feet. stole I'm it. To be like, where are you? I need my back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, let's meet up. Let's grab a coffee. Let's exchange yes. back. I'll buy you a drink. I'll do yeah. anything for this bag. <laughs> oh my god. Well, good luck on your event that you don't have your stuff for. That is, you, you know what? I believe everything works out. So this, I don't know how this is going to work in your favor, but like, it somehow is. So it's it fine. It's fine. Um, let's talk about Dallas. Are you a born and raised Dallas girl? <sighs> I wish. I moved to Texas when I was two. Okay. So oh, I'm that, like, that counts. Yeah, it counts. So basically, um, we've lived like all around Texas. I moved to the suburbs of Dallas when I was in elementary school. Uh, and then I lived okay. in LA from like 17 to 22. And then I've been back. So I spent majority of my life in or around Dallas. I okay. love Dallas. Wait, what? I have to ask because I also, Texas girl, born and raised, mm -hmm. small town, not as cool as Dallas. But then I also moved to LA, did the LA thing. And then I wow. settled in Nashville. But what brought you back to Dallas, like from LA? I have to know if we're like on the same page. I I don't love LA. Like I, yeah, same. it's not, <laughs> yeah, it's not my place. Like I fully feel like myself in Dallas. And it's funny because moving away when I was so young, when I moved out, and I was like, no, LA is it. LA is for me. And when I was there, I actually genuinely liked it or I thought mm -hmm. I did. And then I just wanted, I don't know, like Dallas just started to sound better and better. Um, so I ended up here. I bought a townhouse and then COVID hit. So I was keeping my LA place and then I just didn't because I wasn't going back, obviously. Right. So I didn't renew that lease. And then that's kind of how I ended up here. But honestly, if I end up moving anywhere else it would be nashville so it's so funny like that's i always say like, one thing I, feel. I love yeah. nashville nashville i feel like nashville is a good combination of la with like nicer people but like still city vibes and then you get the southern charm of texas like it kind of combines totally. everything um i do miss texas a lot i do have to ask you um your favorite tex-mex place and i'm gonna see if we compare okay honestly like I know this is going to sound so crazy because no one else would say this, but I'm only saying this from a nostalgic place. But, okay. Like, I love the casino, but that's because I, like, <laughs> grew up with the casino. Like, I, a model taxi, like, absolutely. And I know that's, like, a really mm. basic answer, but, like, truly, that's how no. I feel. Kenzie, we are, we are kindred spirits because that is my go-to answer. Anytime people are like, where should I go in Dallas-Fort Worth? I'm always like, go to me casino. Get a Mambo taxi. The yes. chips are fantastic. Like l one Mambo taxi and you're honestly like oh a God, little yeah. drunk. And it's, it's like, the best. It's so crazy what it'll do to you. And it's so funny because growing up, like my cousins and I are all best friends. And our parents, when we go to dinner, we go to like my casino. I remember our parents like getting drunk off Mambo taxis. Yes. And now like it's so crazy because we go get drunk off Mambo taxis. And by uh, get drunk, I mean you drink half of one. And you're like, oh my God, it's so you're crazy. Literally, I don't know what. Are, I think it's like half sangria, half margarita, which honestly sounds magical. But yeah, they put something in it and it's. It's strong. It's strong, okay. friends. Here's your warning. It's frozen. But... Something about a frozen drink, too. Like, oh, my <sighs> God. Yeah. yeah. Mm, amen. Well, I got to book a freaking flight to Texas mm -hmm. now because I just meet Casina sounds so fire. So um, but let's let's talk about you before we I have so many like girl talk topics I want to dig into. But let's talk. OK, you're 26. I did my deep dive on you. I know way too much. You <laughs> I will say, like, I, I love a good aesthetic. I love branding. I love marketing. I must say, like, you have built such a good brand, and it is just so impressive, everything that you do between, like, your podcast, you have Friend of Mine, which is your lifestyle brand. You've got, you know, YouTube, everything. You're only 26. I guess for those listening who want to market themselves or, like, have a brand or be an entrepreneur, what are your top tips? Okay, so I started 10 years ago, and okay. I think building a brand and building a personal brand are very separate. They're very, I, I, the advice would be very different, but with personal, like building like Kenzie Elizabeth related mm -hmm. stuff, I've really just leaned into the things that I liked, and I feel like yeah. then I, when I was starting, I was more so trying to appeal to everyone, and as I've gotten older and I've had like niche hobbies, like gardening and needle pointing, but like I love going to the bars, but like I've leaned into a lot of like, the mm -hmm. random things that I like. So everything 
that I'm sharing online is very, very true to me, which has been very helpful as far as building a brand because there's more longevity because it is truly me and like the things that I'm interested in that I'll continue to be interested in. Um, But I'm also able to like lean into more of like a niche audience. Not that I'm like the most niche person. I share so many different things. I share basically everything about my life, Um, but I've just really leaned into the things that I liked and then kind of built the brand around that. Yeah. Uh, that makes so much sense. And I, I mean, people ask me this as well. And I think that's the best way to describe it, especially those who are trying to build a following on social media. It's like if you actually are authentic and just sharing what you like, things will yeah. come because it's easy for you to share. It's easy for you to talk on that versus if I'm like, I don't know, but it's like I want to be a I don't I can't even think of like if I'm like trying to talk about football and I'm like not that passionate about football, like it's miserable. You don't mm-hmm. want to show up and do that. Um, So I think that's such good advice. Out of all the things that you do, what is the most difficult part of your job? Like out of all the different avenues. I think the most difficult part of of this job is actually the fact that I share so much of my life. So like when Mm. I'm not wanting to share so much of my life, I, I feel like it's like holding me back. So I feel like it's finding the balance in that or when I'm just ha- going through a hard time and like you still have to like show up and share online because yeah. that's the thing I built which is the dream job and it's an amazing thing but there's cons when like obviously you don't want to everything else that's just like difficult day to day like running a brand and doing that stuff I genuinely love doing it so mm-hmm. I don't like so even the things that I don't really like to do like I hate doing like finances or the business and things like that like I guess that would be it but honestly mm-hmm. it's a lot harder it's hard to share your life and have people have a ton of opinions on it. And like, Oh my God, it. that hits so hard for me. Um, especially because I'm similar to you. I share, I'd say 99% of my life online mm-hmm. because it comes easy to me. I just, I heal and go through emotions by speaking. And that is through my yeah. Instagram platform. But when hard things happen, I I'm curious if you feel the same. I almost feel guilty where it's like, I want to talk about it. I feel like I owe people these answers, but at the same time, it's like, I'm trying to cope with emotions. I don't need people giving me their two cents on like why I should feel happy or sad. So like, do you also feel that way? And like, when you, what do you keep to yourself? If anything, I do feel guilty because I, I value being like authentic and myself and being vulnerable and open and sharing things so much so when I'm in a place where I'm like it's not really I don't want to share something unless it's helpful to other people and I right. don't think it's necessarily helpful to other people if I'm like always in the midst of it and then also I don't want to be like a Debbie Downer so I don't want to like bring right. people like down with me all the time um so I do feel guilty in the sense that I feel like inauthentic sometimes when I'm not like sharing certain things I would say the one thing I keep offline like dating and I don't yeah. date a ton in general like it's I will like a guy like once I will find someone that I actually am interested in like once every other year and then we typically will date for like a long period of time and then you know it's rare I'm not someone who's like I'm I'm the opposite of like boy crazy like I'm so it's it's difficult for me to actually be interested in someone like I'm like okay this is like fun but I don't really care um (laughs) So I would say like dating, but I wouldn't keep that offline forever. Like once, if I'm in like a serious relationship, eventually I would share it. But yeah. I would say that's like the one I'm private. What's like I really your don't rule of what's dating. going on in my life? Dating, yeah, yeah. What's your rule of thumb when it comes to dating? Like, how long would you have to be with someone before you actually post them online? I don't know. It depends on the person. I also like keep joking that I'm like, I'm going to be engaged by end of next year to who? No idea. Like I just like, (laughs) am so like crazy of like, I don't know, but I like kind of do have this weird feeling that I like, I'm going to know pretty early on. I don't think I'm going to date someone for like years and years and years to come. I feel like I would have to be, there's not necessarily a timeline. I would just have to be like very, very sure of the relationship because I don't want to go through another breakup of mine, which obviously that's always a risk that you have to take, but I feel like I just have to feel like very sure. It's it's genuinely a lot harder to keep a relationship offline with the way mm-hmm. that I do my yeah. job because I'm constantly sharing my job day to day. I could probably keep it offline if it was long distance, honestly. Um, but yeah, I think it just depends on the situation and like who I'm with and how they feel about it and whatever. Yeah. I don't oh know. My God. I, I would be fine to keep it private for a long time. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, see, it's so funny. I also said that. I'm like, I'm going to keep it private. And I say that every time I'm like starting to date or like enter a relationship. 
but I'm sure you can relate to this. When I get excited, I just blab. I just, mm-hmm. it just literally comes out. No, and then and honestly, I'm like, you're so right. Well, I wouldn't keep you excited for that long. You're so right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, like I really tried to keep this under wraps, but like, hey guys, these 300,000 people that I don't know, but like, I'm so excited. So let me tell you my whole entire life story. Yeah. I'm going to learn though. I'm going to learn slowly but surely. Um, but that's a wild point that you made because I just was thinking about this as another one of my friends got engaged. And I think it's really easy. I guess you're 26. I just turned 30. I think it's easy to look at other people and be like, oh, my God, like I'm so behind on like a timeline. Um, but to your point, it's like, yeah, you could literally meet someone at the grocery store tomorrow and mm-hmm. fall madly in love with them. And I don't know for the listeners out there who are single and maybe playing the comparison game too, like you don't you could get engaged like three months later that's like a little quick but like it does happen to people so i'm screw a timeline screw a timeline. i keep telling that saying that to my friends because i've also never been i like up until probably like i really am like a relationship girl and up until 23 from probably like really young to 23 i was pretty much always either in a long-term relationship or seeing someone like there was always someone around and then I was like, I really just need to be single for a bit. And then I started to love being single. And then here I am four years later at this point, basically, or three, four years later, um, just now, like wanting to be with someone again. Mm. So it's, it's a very foreign feeling to me because I've never been the girl who's like wanted a relationship, even though I am a relationship girl. I just kind of like always fell into my lap. But okay. now I'm like, okay, I actually do want to be with someone. But I keep saying that. I'm like, you just never know. Like it really. Never. You never know when you're going to meet the right person. You never know. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. Then that goes to anything in your life. Like your next best friend could be your friend that you're going to keep for 50 years. could be the next business opportunity. Like you just really never, ever, ever Never know. know. And I'm hoping that's happening for me like sooner rather than later at this point because now I actually want it. But you just (laughs) never know. Ah, I so agree with that. It goes, it's like the, what is it? The invisible string theory too. It's like Mm -hmm. if two people are meant to be like, It's going to work out where, like, your husband's going to be in Trader Joe's at the same time as you because your car broke down or, like, whatever crazy story, like, it will connect two people. Like, I wholeheartedly believe in that. Um, But I know I have a lot of listeners who are single and they struggle with being single um, and being alone specifically. And, like, I love being alone, but it took me a while to get to that place. What are your tips? Like, what you said you spent, like, four years not in a relationship, just, like, really enjoying being by yourself so like how did you get to that place so I do say I was single for four years and I was but there were also a couple little like flings things <laughs> happening with, yeah flings in the middle of that whatever before like a friend comes at me for this um but for the most <laughs> part I have really been single you have to create a life that you want to live for yourself mm, amen. I think Hobbies are really the answer to everything. I say this all the time, but you build a better relationship with yourself. You build higher self-esteem. You build self-confidence and you build a life for yourself that you like to live. I feel like often when we're sitting here, like sad that we're single, we're like looking for other things to like fix our problem. But I think actually that's probably a sign that like you're not really living the life that you necessarily want to live. There's something wrong with wanting a relationship. I want a relationship. Like there's nothing wrong with that at all. But I do think that we can easily like, try to grab for something to like fix or fill some sort of a void. Mm -hmm. So when you're single, creating the life that you want to live like for yourself and being so happy. Like I was thinking about that today. I'm like, it's so funny how for so long, I genuinely didn't even have a desire. Like friends would try to set me up. Like I I was, yeah, there's a guy that like friends tried to set me up a couple years ago. That's like actually insane that I said no, but that's just like where I was at in life that I was like, no, I really like do not want it. I'm having so much fun. I was like going on girls trips. I had my whole thing, my whole life going. Like, I, I just had things going on. I feel like you need to fill your own life for yourself. Mm. And then also I think that by doing that and creating the life that you want to live, you're also going to end up create like attracting the partner that you want at the end of the day. Ugh. A freaking man. I hope people listen to that uh, over and over again because I really do think a, a – partner or boyfriend or whatever relationship should not complete your life like it should only add to it it should just make it better it shouldn't take away anything so I always tell people like you cannot love someone else until you love yourself and I think Mm -hmm. I always say like 
legitimately date yourself. Like when you're being, when you are having, you know, seasons of singleness, like, yeah, go find out the hobbies you like. Literally go take a pottery class or whatever it may be, like a run club, which I don't understand why people love run clubs, but they are the thing apparently now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like fall in love with yourself. And then when someone does come around, you know what you like, you know what you want, you better know yourself so then they can better love you. Um, yeah, date yourself, date yourself. I, I've heard it said once, someone said this to me when I was probably like 20 years old and it's always stuck with me. And she said, don't date someone until they make your already like amazing life even more amazing. So it's Mm -hmm. the idea of them being an added bonus to your life versus them, like, quote, completing you. And I think that that is huge. Obviously, things happen and you meet people at different times and stuff. It's not always like that. But I think that if you are in a point where you're single, like, you definitely have a lot more control. Also, when you're single, you have so much freedom. You have so much – you can be selfish. Like, there's so many pros to being single. You can get so much done. Honestly, like, I don't think I would even be – where I'm at career wise, if I had married the guys that I was dating a couple years ago, like I think that that would have like really held me back. And because I was single, I was able to do so many other things. So ultimately it's been like a great thing in my life. Uh, I I feel like more single people need to hear that. Like, yes, be selfish, get where you want to be. And also like, look at freaking Kourtney Kardashian. I don't even know how old she is. I'm going to butcher this and fact check me people but she's like 38 just she just got married and had another kid so it's like your life doesn't have to start um just because you turn 28 or 30 like it's or it doesn't have to end um like you have so much freaking time um but speaking of dating what's your worst date ever (laughs) if you have one I really like don't go on dates like it's I love that for you (laughs) also I feel like I always end up dating friends Always. Like, that's pretty really? much, like, my uh, maybe something I should stop. But when you're in, especially in the, like, specific environments that I've dated them in, like, a date ends up being, like, step 10, whereas it would normally be step one because you mm. really have to vet it out and think about it when you're in a group of friends. Like, there's just so many other elements to it. You're not just going to immediately go on a date. Like, you basically are, like, by the time you end up going on that date, you're pretty much, like, we're going to be together. You're together. Does right, that right, make right. Sense? You're not just, like, asking someone who's, like, in your circle of friends to, like, go on a date and, like, it not... Like, it's just, like, it makes things messy and whatever. Wait, um if you If what? you date a friend, though, does it get weird if you guys break up? Like, does that... I'm always so scared to date. I mean, it sounds ideal, right? Like, you fall in love with a friend. But then I get nervous. I'm like, well, if we break up, what if we never speak? Like, I'm so awkward around exes. Like, I know exes can be friends, but, like, I can't do it. So how do how does that work? Um, I've gotten lucky because I don't have to be around them after. Also, oh, I'm love. so good at awkward situations. Like I handle it so well. It obviously changes the dynamic, but I, every time it's like, okay, well, I was in college, and then mm. really it was my group of friends that like they kind of came into, and we had mutual friends, and it was just different. And you so like every time I feel like I've had a breakup with a friend. Our, all, all of our lives were changing anyways and we were moving away or doing something or whatever it okay. might be. So it wasn't necessarily that we were like still around the same people by the time we had broken up. So like okay, we could have broken fair. up really earlier. It would have been a long, it would have been a lot worse. I just haven't, one, I mean, there's one breakup where it's like we still have the same friends and it was years and years and years ago. Like there's certain things, but honestly, it's just, okay. it's, I, I don't know what it is. It's just, there's, I, always date a friend and I always think like at the beginning I'm like one or the other I either shake their hand and I know that we're going to be to date like literally first five seconds I'm like okay this is happening like immediately or I am convinced I don't like them for like two years and then we fall in love (laughs) like there's just there's no in between ever like my best friend Dom is like all like even like with something recently she's like you'll end up being all on board like she's like just give it a couple months and I'm like no Dom I really don't think so and she's like okay whatever like she won't even talk to me about it and honestly she's probably right you know wow I love that for you I literally love that for you that you know so well okay well now I'm I'm racking my brain I don't have like a large group group of guy friends in Nashville but now I'm like okay but also okay here's here's my issue with Nashville and I'm sure with Dallas too legitimately every single man is like all in every friend group that I do have here all married 
Like it is so. I and this is at the same in Dallas. Like a very no. really. All of my friends are single. Like wow. none of them are married. I've had. I mean, like none of my close friends are even engaged. Like I, I most of them aren't even dating. Honestly, like there's only two people out of probably like my close 30 people that I'm around regularly that are dating. Like it's so in my hometown too, like no one gets married young. We never, wow. I don't know. I'm also like mid twenties. So I'm okay, sure that's that true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But still year, like, but still, okay, Dallas no pop yeah. off. I'm impressed. Wow. Um, yeah. Cause Nashville's very much, it seems to be the opposite where like people are like, very well I guess with Nashville there's two two avenues you're either on Broadway you're getting blackout drunk like you're in like mm-hmm. the thick of your party girl phase or you're baking sourdough you're going to church which I love Jesus yeah. like I also go to church but like and then you go home and you uh, hang out with your husband all day long which like both sound lovely but there's got to be a happy medium and I'm trying to find that mm-hmm. so no we're, we're working on it we're working on it. Um, well, speaking of hobbies, you have a book club. I also have a book club. I'm such an like psycho weirdo for like thriller books. I have to ask you, um, one, how many books have you read so far this year? I feel like I'm going to be like embarrassed at my number compared to yours. Um, and then what's your favorite so far? Okay, I'm pulling up my Goodreads. I've actually read, I normally read like two or three books a year, or a year, a week. But <laughs> um, I've actually not, I've read... So far this year, only 13. Like, normally I will read, like, 30-something by this, or at least 50. I've not, I was in the worst book route I've been in in years. Um, I just read, if you like thrillers, this one is really dark and very disturbing. And I will give a trigger warning because I posted it once, like, reading this book, it's good. And I got annihilated online, but it's called Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Kenzie, I've read it. Oh, it is... I almost felt bad saying that I liked it because I'm like, oh my God, people are going to judge me because I'm like, I'm not supporting violence over here. It's like the darkest, scariest book. But I, I, when I say I finished it in 24 hours and had to seriously like look within and be like, what's wrong with you? Um, It's, Uh it's, I'm yeah. Trigger warning to the listeners. Like you're going to not be able to put it down, but it is like, Karen Slaughter, what happened to you, girl? Like, what? And also, like, is that her real name? Because that's the perfect name yeah. for her as an author. <laughs> if so, you know? I, I mean, maybe it is. If I mean, if it's not, she's genius for, like, marketing herself. And, like, Karen Slaughter, I'm like, yeah, your books contain a lot of Slaughter, um, mm-hmm. homegirl. Um, yeah, that one was good. If you're also looking for a dark, disturbing, like almost to the level of pretty girls, I just read and it was also felt bad posting about it. The, um, the favorite girl by Monica Aria. Oh, when I tell you, I I didn't really know where this book was going. Um, I want to say it, it's not as violent as pretty girls, but when I, it is so insanely disturbing like think american horror story just the weirdest shit i think i read that one in like 12 hours so if you need if you need to get out of your book right that one i think will do the trick pretty girls i read three books last week like i was so honestly i think i'm like i'm definitely not tracking all the books that i've read too because i've definitely read more than 13 this year but um i also just read this is totally different not dark not thriller nothing like that but i read the lies that bind by emily giffen oh i, I love that. US history. that's like my favorite thing ever so she read and i like like pop culture u.s history so she has this other book called meant to be and okay. it's like loosely based off the kennedys and like one thing about me like the kennedy mm. lore i'm so into so i was reading it it's just it reads as a normal fiction book and it is a normal fiction book okay but it's What's going on? I mean, chapter one, I was like, this is literally the Kennedys IRL. And then it's basically, it's basically Caroline Bissett Kennedy and it's so good. And then I just read The Lies That Bind and it's another romance novel, but it has a tie into 9-11. Like the man disappears in 9-11. And it was so good. I read that book in one afternoon. I like start, I came home from therapy. I like went in my pool at 3 p.m. and I finished the book by that night. Like, I it start and finish in six hours. Okay. It was so good. 
a- literally adding to cart now, mainly because th- when I tell you the only books I read are like dark, disturbing thrillers. And sometimes I'm mm. like, we got to maybe branch out of our little our little thriller bubble. So I'm going to add that to my cart. I also, everyone and their mother has told me to make a Goodreads account and I have not yet. So you, oh, you just pulling to. up yours has convinced me. Uh, I know. The, it the just, interface isn't the best. It's, it's definitely very outdated, but it's really, okay. really convenient. And there's definitely, like, I know okay. there's new ones coming out that have, are better, but, like, my stuff was on Goodreads for the past four years, so. Mm, okay. I got I, I just need to suck it up. For me, it's, like, it's just one more, like, a platform. I'm, like, how many more mm. platforms can I have? Like, there, I, I can't remember all the content. logins. You're not what creating content. You're not creating You're content. Just posting. You just mark things. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. All right, well, you listeners out there who have been messaging me telling me to make a Goodreads, I'm doing it. I'm finally doing it. It's my it's my Perfect. afternoon project on this day. Um, okay, let's dig into some listener questions because I have quite a bit. I want to make sure we get through them. Um, so, so the first one, someone asked, and I think this will be great because I think we're both a little bit of self-proclaimed homebodies. Um, how do you balance going out with friends who only want to party, they only want to go to bars, and also wanting you want to stay home and just be alone? Like, how do you find that balance? Um, so I definitely have that issue because – and also I was the one who only wanted to go out 24-7 for like yeah. two years. <laughs> So it was actually me, but when I moved to the house that I'm living in now, I moved 10 minutes away from where I was previously, but where I was previously was in the middle of the bar. So like, that was just like what we did all the Mm. time. All my friends were so fun. Um, So I just created a life for myself in this house that I love that made me want to like leave less. So I invite people here. I really am the least social I've ever been, nor, I mean, Mm. I have people over, but I don't go out a ton at all. I think I've, I've gone out less than three times this year. Me wow. and like not even really out. I actually haven't gone out out at all this year. Like I am actually a grandma. I've like gone day drinking once. Like I just don't go places. Um, but I really stopped going out and drinking so much because my best friend like really doesn't even drink at all. So we just started doing more wholesome activities and started like mm. filling our time in that way. I definitely see my friends that I go out with that I would go out with way less. I see them barely at all at this point. But I just don't have the energy to do it anymore. So you have yeah. to just find activities that are not that and find friends that want to do those. Right. I think you also have to take the initiative. I think if you're going to sit mm-hmm. back and be like, well, they only want to go out to the bars and like, I don't want to. So like, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to sit at home, poor pitiful me. Like you can, but I think if you don't want to do what they're doing, it falls on then on your shoulders to take the initiative and be like, Hey guys, like instead of going out tonight, would you want to come over? Like, let's do movie night, wine night. Like honestly go on TikTok mm-hmm. Anytime I need like a girl's night idea, just scroll through TikTok and like, they have the cutest thing. Like me and my girlfriend like painted wine glasses, uh, like a month yeah. ago. Um, so like, yeah, you extend the olive branch and then I guarantee you that they probably will accept it because look, not everyone wants to go get hammered every single week. And like, honestly, they might not know what else to do. Like that just might be their routine. And maybe they're also looking for a reason mm-hmm. to stay in. Um, so yeah, I, I would say like, maybe you reach out and then, and then if they say no, then, you know, maybe find some more home buddy so- friends. You're so right, though. Like, you have to be the one that takes the initiative. And I'm always the one who takes the initiative. I'm, like, the planner in our friend group anyways. So I would even, like, we even had something last summer where everyone came over. And I think I hosted, like, a dinner party. And I had a literal summer presentation. There's a TikTok of this. Of, like, our summer plans. Of, like, here's our bucket list. Here's the concerts I want to go to. Here's the other, like, chef here's themes for dinner parties like because I didn't want our lives to be so focused on the bar people say that all the time about Dallas like all there is to do is like eat and drink and I'm like that's for people who only go and eat and drink though like there's actually a lot of other things that you can do but you're just choosing to and it's so easy to get into that routine like I did that but I also love to go eat and drink so like it wasn't like complaining (laughs) um but yeah you have to you yourself have to like take ownership of it amen to that um Okay, um, teenage celeb crushes. <laughs> so in the last podcast, I talked about my like current celeb crush. And I, guys, f- just to update you, it has now changed from Diplo. I, that was a short-lived crush. It's no longer. Anyways, whatever. Um, so people asked us, it, do you remember your like cliche teenage crush from growing up? Yes, and I feel like he was actually a little bit older than my time. 
But it was, no, no, because another Cinderella story. Chad Michael Murray, like, 1,000%. Oh. And One Tree Hill is, like, my favorite show ever. But, like, I, one thing about me, I love a very, like, creative, more, like, emotional guy. Like, there's something about that that I just connect with better. So, like, the Chad Michael Murray being, like, the basketball player who writes, like, there's something about that that, like, most people <laughs> would be, like, I hate. And I love that. Uh also, Chad Michael Murray in the the Freaky Friday remake. Um, oh my god! The most excited I have ever been about something. Like, no, I will so wait. In, oh, he also looked so hot in like the photo that they posted. It was like Jake is back. I was like, dear, dear Lord. Okay, well, that is a crush that I have continued to have. Um, this is random because this was mine. Do you remember the Disney Channel movie called Brink, like the skating movie? let me google it i'm Disney going to have to post this because i feel like this is such a niche crush wait i don't think i've even seen this one <laughs> i is think it's maybe okay, okay I'm a, um the the main guy his name was andy um he's like the that. skater boy with like the blonde floppy hair but i was thinking about that today and then i went and googled this crush that i had growing up and i was like all right, he's got like elbow pads on. He's got like knee pads on. I was like, not not hot anymore. But oh my god, at the time mm -hmm. I just remember, and that was like in the prime time of Disney movies when they were just like the classics. I thought this man, I was like, I want to date a skater so bad. Mm -hmm. Um, it was short lived. It was that, and then High School Musical, Zac Efron, nothing better. Oh, of course, well, of literally course. nothing better. No, I was well, like, I. But again, of course, I liked him because he's like a musician. Too. He's a basketball player. Like, I like people who surprise you. I like people who do things okay. that would, like, traditionally not work together. You know? Fair. Like, they just, I like people who are, like, out of the box. So, like, okay. Zach Efron, Troy Bolton, even though it's not, you know, this, these are his characters, obviously. But, like, him being a basketball player and then being in the musical. Like, also, there's something yeah, his, about like, his that, like, soft side. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and he doesn't care what people think, even though he does, but he still does it. Like, I, oh my God, I love that oh, he was he was a dream wait okay so if you had to choose though like you can only pick one for like your perfect guy you're going like athletic like the basketball player Troy Bolton or are you gonna go with like the theater nerd like you can't have both of them what are you picking I would choose Chad Michael Murray as the writer <laughs> okay. I wouldn't even choose like, it Fair. would be like Chad Michael Murray Fair. as the writer I think of them though I would I, honestly, for Zac Efron, though, it would be Troy Bolton in the musical, not because I want someone to be in a musical, but because okay. I feel like that's, like, really his true self. Like, that's what he, like, deep down wants, and I like that he's, like, going for that. You know? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a fair answer. I like that answer. Um, okay. Ooh, advice. This person wants to know how to deal with a friend who is a constant complainer. Hmm. That's a tough one. I don't really I have mean, friends. Complainers. I, I think it's hard because uh, my initial response would be like confront them like if you love someone and I truly do believe this I would I always tell my friends I'm like if I'm doing something I would hope out of love for me you guys would pull me aside and be like hey as an outsider I'm letting you know how this comes across like I just want you to be aware but then saying that out loud I'm like oh my god that's so like kind of is it mean being like, Hey, you, you're complaining a lot. And like our friend group hates it. Maybe cut that out. Like there has to be a way to approach that in a kind way. Um, either that or my, my advice would be like, if they're taking all your energy, distance yourself because you want to be someone with someone who like fills your cup versus like drains your cup. Um, yeah, it's a tricky one. I think there's a way to handle it like lightheartedly with humor, but mm -hmm. then also if they're complaining, I think maybe let's say they're really unhappy about in one area of their life and that's why they're complaining about everything. I would talk to them and be like, okay, what's going on? Like, how can we fix this? Yeah. And um, and then say, well, br I would bring up, like, this is actually what I would do is I would be like, all right, what's going on? Let's fix this. Like, I don't want you to feel this way. And then when we're talking about fixing it, I would bring up like, well, I think that the way that you're speaking about everything is probably making things a lot worse because it's pretty negative. So we don't want that for you. Mm. Like coming out of the place of like, I don't want you to feel this way and I don't want you to be 
unhappy or miserable or, or negative or whatever it is. But then at the end of the day, like if they're not um, willing to make a change, right. like you have to make a decision. Right. 100%. Yeah. I think that's a good point. Like coming at it in a caring way. Cause you're right. If someone is complaining, I think about the times where I'm miserable and I'm just being an annoying bitch and complaining. Yeah. It's coming from a place where like I'm deeply unhappy. So if that is mm-hmm. your friend, like there probably is something going on with them. So yeah, I think the first step would be to figure that out, like be a good friend. And then if they're like, Nope, not willing to listen. Like I just want to be in my misery. You did what you did or you did what you could. And then now it's up to you to like, Protect your peace. Do what do what you need to do. Um, also, yeah, just like love life, guys. Like, there's we shouldn't, you know, there's not we shouldn't complain that much. But easier said than done. Um, ooh, how to navigate a career change in your late twenties or early thirties? Feel that in my soul. <laughs> I feel like you have to remember how young you still are. Yeah, like. You can change your career at any point in your life. Like, obviously, we all have agency over our own lives. But, like, late 20s and early 30s, while we all put so much pressure on ourselves and partially society as well, you're still so young. So to make that change Mm -hmm. now versus making it in your 40s and 50s when you have just added responsibilities, whether it be mortgages, kids, marriages, whatever it is, you have the least amount of responsibility that you probably ever will have right now in this current state of your life. Making the change now is way better. Like you should be so excited and like proud of yourself. Right. And also I think it, it, whatever the saying is like, you don't know unless you try. So yes, it's scary and it's daunting. I think a lot of people stick with their career, even if they don't like it because they're scared. What if I fail? What if it doesn't work out? You know, what if I embarrass myself or I have to face the failure? And it's like, yeah, but what if, what if you thrive? What if you have a new business that pops off? Like you literally don't know until you take the first step. And I always say like, yeah, if it does fail, that sucks. And it's a shitty feeling and like bruises our ego, but it also taught us something so important, like something that you needed to learn in that moment. So I don't know who wrote this in, but like I fully support, um, and maybe don't like quit your job. Like, okay, let's, let's be rational, but I support like pursuing what you actually want to be doing. Totally. 100%. Um, Okay, spicy one. Would you fake an orgasm or tell a partner um, how you actually feel? Hmm. I I mean, the answer is obviously telling, but like. (laughs) But I'm like, I think it depends on the situation. Am I actually invested in them? Like, do I actually like them? Will there be a future? If the answer is yes, then I say communicate. Yes, by all means, you deserve to feel good um and it should be a 50 50 street but like if it's a one night stand and you're never gonna see him again like i don't think you need to be texting them being like hey let me tell you everything that's that would be odd when it's already over and you're not yeah i agree yeah 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 even i'm also like I, i i mean people do say like obviously like communicate and all that but like in the moment like i know myself like i probably would especially if I'm not enjoying it, just be like, let's get this over with. But I mean, maybe that's, that's my flaw and I should work on that and be a little bit more communicative. We don't know. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I know the right answer, but I, I think, yeah, if it's like someone that you're with, obviously long term, then you communicate. But if it's, yeah. Yeah. yeah if it's a one night stand, mm, you know what? <laughs> Fake it till you make it. Um, okay. Uh, this one was interesting. I- energy sucking friends versus couch friends. How to differentiate and how to find the good ones. I'm like, I've never heard the term couch friends. I'm assuming that's someone like you just sit on your couch with and drink wine. Mm-hmm. Your couch friends. When I think of energy, well, energy sucking. I don't think of couch friends with the opposite being energy sucking. I think okay. of couch friends versus bar friends. Oh, interesting. Okay. So your couch friends, like going out in your 20s, I think we all get kind of confused on like who our real friends are. I think how to differentiate that though is pretty obvious. It's how you feel when you're not, when they leave. Yeah. Um, 100%. I always say like, if, if you leave a situation feeling worse than you entered it, especially with the friendship, like if you meet up with a friend for coffee or sitting on a couch and they get up and leave and you're like, oh my God, I feel 10 times worse than when we started this conversation you need to evaluate that friendship. Like you should always leave any interaction with a true friend being like, oh my God, my cup is full. Um, Like I I got something from that. Not saying they need to give you everything. It's a 50-50 whatever friendship. But yeah, like you shouldn't leave feeling icky. 
when I was maybe 19 or 20, my friend TK and I, we were doing these like weekly meetings of like self-help and blah, 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 like very us. And she had us one week write down like a T-chart of things that left us feeling refreshed with more energy and things that left us feeling drained and more negative. And it seems really obvious because it feels like it's something that you would just pick up on. But doing that exercise made me realize so much more how I actually didn't even realize how I was feeling in different situations. And it wasn't just friends. It was like, if I spend time on my phone, if I do the, mm. whatever activity was happening throughout the week. But I think even like, if you really are wondering this, I would literally make a T-chart and write how you feel after certain settings or put them on each side, whoever yes. it might be. Um, because sometimes we just don't know, like we're not as intentional. Like we're just like living our lives like day to day. Um, and that was like such a, that we reference that chart all the time. Yeah. Uh, I always say like, when in doubt, write it out. There's something about mm -hmm. getting out of your head and onto paper. And when you actually see something, for some reason, it like wakes you up. You're like, oh my God, this is like what I want. This is what I've been missing out on. So yeah, I totally agree. If you're feeling that way, like, look, make a little chart, get, I'm a pen and paper girly. Um, and just start writing it out. And I think that, yeah, that'll give a lot of clarity on like what you actually want in life. No, totally. Um, okay, last one. What is one trend that is in right now that you wish would be out? Oof. Okay, see. I am such a hypocrite for this one because I actually just posted on my story like these like red ballet flats because I'm trying to, I'm really trying to be in like my soft girl feminine era with the ballet flats. I'm not going to lie. Like I don't love them. Um, so I'm so sorry guys. I don't even think I linked them. So that makes me feel better. Like they are cute and they're comfortable, but like, I'm so over the ballet flat trend mainly cause like I wore them in seventh grade and I just like, don't mm -hmm. look cute in ballet flats. I'm just not a ballet. Flat I really. like them. It took me a while to wear them, but I don't think I look good in them. Yeah, no, so I, I definitely don't look good in them. <laughs> I wear them. Like I like them yeah. and I have 10 different colors, but I don't think that they look amazing on me. Okay, yeah, but they are comfortable. I will say, like, a flat shoe that covers my toes was a nice feeling. I felt very secure. I felt like I could run fast if I needed to. My feet were warm, easy to walk in. But, yeah, I saw myself in pictures, and I was like, that wasn't my best look. I don't I don't think I need to do that again. So I'm No, choosing. I feel that. And here's the thing. Like, I'm going to keep wearing them, but I don't think I look amazing in them, you okay. know? Hey, hey. They're comfortable. They're functional shoes. So, like, I guess yes. I can support it. But I'm kind yes. of over the trend. <laughs> fair. That's fair. I think that's mine, too. I can't think of anything that I don't, like, off the top of my head. Honestly, yeah. I'm like, I don't know what's trending right now. Like, someone asked me a question. My mind goes blank. Yeah, I know. I'm like, what are the trends right now? I feel like, oh God, I, I haven't, I, I guess I need to go online and shop. <laughs> I'm like, ballet. I don't oh. love like certain like but I like certain Bermudas on certain people but like the way mm -hmm. like the shorts I'm not I'm not obsessed with those but I don't hate them yeah I've definitely seen really cool girls in like a long Bermuda yeah. short and I'm like oh my god and they probably were in a ballet flat too and I was like you look so effortlessly the cool and the top, like, it looks so good yes yeah. it looks so cool and I know the second I put that on my body people would be like what is wrong with you um, but I, yeah, so I like it in theory. Same with like the boxer short trend. I think it's so cute. And then sometimes I put like the outfit on my body and I'm like, yeah, I think it takes certain girls to pull off certain trends. And like, I'm sure I can pull off some and some I can't. Also, it's so difficult. This is what they don't talk about enough. It is so difficult to find the right pair of boxer shorts that are actually going to survive more than one wash mm -hmm. and keep their mm -hmm. structure, keep their fit. Like the best ones I've had are from Park, but they're like $100. So it's like, yeah. it's not really like, it's, they're boxer shorts, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I love the look, but they are, it's so hard to find a good pair. Yeah, it is. And I know the, the one pair I got, which is probably why I didn't love the look, like they were so cute. And like I did have a cute outfit on, but they're from Amazon. So of course I washed yeah, them and they, they literally turned into like toddler shorts the exactly. next day. I was like, damn, they were cute in theory. I wore them once, but it was fun while it lasted. Yeah, it was fun while it lasted. Ah, oh, tragic. 
Uh, well, Kenzie, I could literally talk to you all day long, but I'll let you get on. Hopefully find your suitcase. I really hope this girl well, has hope. messaged you in the past hour <laughs> <laughs> saying that she's at your doorstep. I don't know. Seriously. Maybe. Also, get an air tag. Put I put air tag in everything. Everything. I I'm will. Like, I have air tags. I have four air tags sitting in my closet that I just <laughs> haven't put in them. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, it's it, you know, lucky girl syndrome. It'll come back to you. Um, for all the people listening, where can they find you? Um, on socials, like listen to your podcast, catch up with you, all the fun things. Well, thank you for having me. Yes. Um, you can find me at Kenzie Elizabeth on everything. Kenzie uh, the Tuxin on TikTok. My podcast is House Guest, and my lifestyle brand is Friend of Mine. Yeah, oh, she does it all, friends. She does it all. Um, well, Kenzie, thank you so much. Next time I'm in Dallas, we'll go get Mambo Taxis yes. at Me Casino. Oh my god, I would love yeah. that. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. I will see everyone next week. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to Off the Rails podcast. It's been real. It's been unhinged, and I'll see everyone next week. In the meantime, do all the podcast things like listen, leave a five star review and catch up with me on socials at Off the Rails with Morgan. Bye.